Angle stands are amazing. They're resilient, they're tough, but they're fun. And I'm I'm really excited to hopefully meet a lot a lot more of you. Isaac has the big game. Then we became a real balanced offense for the playoff run, which I thought was really important. He put on the greatest route running exhibition I have ever seen in my life. He was he was football twenty four seven, and that was the greatest part of of Chad. At times at times the early part, I would tell him when he were throwing deep passes, I said, "Don't wait too long." You know, because I'm going to get away. If you ain't going to have the arm to get there. So, you know, they, I want to run to the ball, you know. Well, Duke, it looks like Duke's in the waiting room. I don't want to keep Duke waiting. He gave us uh, a very limited amount of time. I know he's a busy, busy man. Duke, what's going on, big dog? Hey, nobody. Jim, how are you, man? Thanks for having me on. Yeah, hey. I'm real busy. I'm sitting on my porch. Yeah, well, hey. <laughs> I have a little drink going on there. You know, Joe Burrow has played in big games his entire life, and I would think he will be a steady hand at the at the, at the bow of the ship. And uh, I think I wouldn't be surprised if they take him all the way to the Super Bowl. I really wouldn't. Yeah. Touchdown! Welcome, everybody, to the 93rd episode of Talking uh, Football with Bengal Jim and Friends. We're almost at our 100th episode, guys. This is crazy. Big night tonight. Uh, guys, if you guys remember the Super Bowl special, Super Bowl 16 special uh, that we did a few years ago, we popped up seven or eight guys on the screen and had the best time. Well, tonight is the 2005 AFC North champion, champion reunion show tonight. Uh, we've got six or seven guys in the waiting room right now waiting on a couple more guys to, to pop in the waiting room. So, uh, James, uh, pre- hey, this is a big night tonight. I mean, it's a, there's so many fans. There was 15 years stretch from 90 to, to 2000, 2005 that this team wasn't very good. It was hard, man. And with it, this this 05 team started a whole new generation of Bengal fans, guys. James, it, it, a lot of younger fans, this is when they became fans of this team, this 2005 team. No doubt about it. 2005 was a, a special year. Certainly didn't end the way we wanted, but excitement all season. And as you alluded to, Jim, so many new fans came on board um, in, in 2005, still here and looking forward to tonight's episode. Those that watched the, the Super Bowl special we did um, last year, man, it was just a, a fun night to see the interaction between these guys. When we pull these guys on tonight, the first time they've seen each other in, in years and five, six, seven, ten plus years. So, it's going to be exciting for them. It's going to be exciting for us. Uh, be in the show by the fans, for the fans. If you have questions for um, any of the gentlemen that are going to be on here in a little bit, please type them up. We'll do our best to uh, get those on there and, and look forward to um, to the show. I wanted to give a big shout-out to uh, Willie. Willie was a lot of the, the legs behind this, getting all of these uh, gentlemen on here. So, uh, as always, thanks to Willie for all he does. Yep. Um, I, I just a real quick before we start pulling everybody on, um, so, so basically what we're going to do here, we're going to pull everybody on individually. We'll have a, the group of guys on here. Look, it, it's, this is a live show. Okay. So just like we did for that Super Bowl 16 special, they're, they're, we're going to be as efficient as we possibly can with this. Jamie's going to be in the background kind of producing to make sure that when somebody's talking, they go full screen, the whole nine yards that way we're not talking over each other, but guys, we appreciate everybody, uh, being here with us tonight. We've got a ton of folks in the, in the uh, chat area right now. So uh, I don't think we want to wait too much longer, do we? Want to go ahead and just start pulling them on? Do it. Let's go. We're going to have to remove ourselves from the screen here. There we go. Got Shane, B. Willie. So we got we, we still got some people dialing in, but we're going to pull Willie on last. So I don't know. I'm sure everybody, unless you've been hiding under a rock, man, Willie uh, – just announced by the Cincinnati Bengals, our, our new Ring of Honor uh, 2022 inductee, Willie Anderson. Congratulations, Willie. What's up, guys? What's going on, man? <laughs> well, What's going on, still, still wearing the jerseys. You know what I mean? <laughs> it still fits. Mine doesn't hey. anymore. I finally, yeah. I finally got back down to my high school weight now, so uh, you know my, my, my jerseys boost as hell now. <laughs> 
can breathe a little, not be. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me, let me do this real quick, guys, and, and, and as some of the other guys pop in here, we'll we'll bring them on the screen here. But just everybody that's watching right now, so you know the, the 2005 Cincinnati Bengals season was the 36th uh, season, uh, in, in uh, for the Bengals in the NFL, um, it was the first season in, with a winning record, a playoff berth, and a divisional title since two th- uh, t- since 1990. 15 years, Bengal fans waited for this. Um, the Bengals established a new home season uh, attendance record that year. Um, the defense I mean, gave up a lot of yards, but, man, they were opportunistic. They led the NFL in turnovers with 44, uh, and Delta O'Neal led the NFL in interceptions that year. Uh, the offense was ranked sixth in the NFL at the end of the year. And the Bengals punter, Kyle Larson, we were talking about prior to coming on the show, kicked the longest punt in the NFL in 2005 of 75 yards. And I'll never forget, because I was at this game December 18th, 2005, the entire city of Cincinnati drove up 75 north to watch the Bengals beat up the Detroit Lions to clinch their first playoff spot in 15 years. And I'll tell you guys, you know, one of the most fun teams we've ever watched in the Cincinnati Bengals uniforms. And I would tell you, we talk about you guys a lot because we think you guys are the top five team in the Cincinnati Bengals history uh, in, in this organization. Um, 11 and five, the ASC North champions on the screen here, guys. Man, welcome to the show, guys. Appreciate you having me. All right, so let's just kick this off. This is very informal. We're going to freestyle. You guys talk about whatever you want, but I'm going to give us a little bit of a track to run on. I'm going to play uh, that, that play a couple videos we can talk about. So before the season started, the expectations were pretty high. Uh, Marvin hadn't done very well with opening day games on the road or at home. But that year, you started the, you started the season out against the city up north. That's what we call the Cleveland Browns, the city up north. And we're going to play this video. And when we come back from this video, let's talk about this. Carson Palmer, the Bengals offense, then took control, rolling off 17 unanswered points. Palmer finished 26 of 34 for 280 yards. He tossed touchdowns to Kevin Walter. And Jeremy Johnson as the Bengals open to 27-10 third quarter lead. In the second half, Cincinnati's young defense kept Dilfer in check with interceptions from rookie Odell Thurman and second-year cornerback Kiwan Ratliff to spoil the head coaching debut of Romeo Cornell. A 27-13 week one win relieves Marvin Lewis of his opening day blues as the Bengals seek to parlay their fast start. So week one, you guys beat up on the, the Brownies 27 to 13. Tell me you guys remember that game. Oh, yeah. I do. Yeah. Go, 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 go ahead, Richie. <laughs> well, what I liked about that season was uh, it gave the offensive line a lot more um, – responsibility we'd always get a line of scrimmage with two plays on every situation by counting people in the box or certain safeties coming up in the box we'd either run the ball or pass the ball and Carson came out and we gave him time and did a great job that's why we won the game Brian yeah no I mean I think you know you showed the clip with Odell and uh you know that's what that defense did like you said we gave up some yardage uh, but when it came t- down to it, we could turn guys over and we got after the passer pretty good. And, and that was consistent for the whole year. And uh, and that is how we won a lot of football games on defense, helping to give our explosive offense extra possessions. Levi, give, give, give us our thoughts on that game. You remember that game opening down? That was a big, big game for you guys. Yeah, I, I just remember it setting the tone. Um, we had to stay ready on offense. When we came to the sideline after we scored or whatever we did, I mean, that young uh, defense and explosive defense, like they, they kept us on, uh, on, 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 our, on our heels. Like we could not take rest because we knew that either Delta or Odell or one of those guys were big playmakers and were going to get us an interception and we'd be right back out there. And that kind of set the tone for the whole year. Get going on or so in week two, you guys went, uh, you guys um, played Minnesota, just destroyed Minnesota 37 to eight. You guys had seven turnovers on defense that game, seven. Um, 
And then week three, I'm going to play this video. Then we're going to have some more conversation. Then week three, you get six more turnovers uh, against the Chicago Bears. Check this video clip out. It's not the greatest uh, quality, but check this clip. Only Edwards in the backfield, and Orton right to work. And that's dropped and intercepted on the deflection and picked off. Brian Simmons, he loses the ball, vacuumed in by Odell Thurman. Here comes the rookie from Georgia, getting a block and tackled by Mark Edwards at the 17-yard line. 10 for Cincinnati. Palmer, and he will find Johnson in the end zone for a touchdown. A quick strike and 18-yard. There's offense. <laughs> On the 13-yard line, first and 10. And Orton going deep. And looking for Muhammad, intercepted for a fourth time. This time it's picked off. Palmer with the hesitation looking for Henry. And he's got him for a touchdown. Chris Henry is first career NFL touchdown. And Palmer wide open, Chad Johnson. And Hey, hey Jim, I'll say some I'll say some funny here uh for Shane and JT. This is the season John Thornton starts screaming in the, in the locker room to the to the press. The defense plays on this team too. <laughs> uh, hey, hey man. We, you know we want we want the defense in the plays on this team too. Yeah, man. You know, know it's funny with, with just seeing those clips, man. It was um, you know, just, just from being around that year, and we, we were good previous years I think 03 kind of started it like we we were eight and six at one point and just didn't finish I think the maturity hurt us but 05 I think things started to come together and like you said Willie the defense we, we got so many turnovers earlier in the season that it gave us confidence and, and we did give up a lot of yards especially down the stretch um and a lot of points but the the turnovers helped our offense which was light light years away you know, ahead of our defense just because they were just super talented just seeing these videos. But um, that was probably the perfect mix of, of a, you know, a, you know, a defense that gets so many turnovers with, you know, offense that just had a tremendous amount of talent. I mean, we, we haven't seen all, all the guys make plays yet on these videos, but we, we had so much talent on that team. We, we didn't even know it. I mean, just looking back at it, like I'm just thinking of it now, like we were just super talented and it all didn't come together at that point, but that that, that was a really fun team. Yeah. The one thing I, I remember about that team was we had a lot of turnovers or, or were on the receiving end of a lot of turnovers, but we had a lot of injuries late in the season in our secondary, and I think that really hurt us in the long run that year for, for the powerful offense that we had and the points we were able to put up. I think it just made it difficult at the end when, when you're, you're putting guys in that – hadn't been there all year and they're actually in big roles yeah hey 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 b let me brian let me answer this question man i mean you guys had six turnovers that game against the against the bears yeah. uh it looked like you had that interception um i know you purposely put it on the ground for odell right but uh yeah 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 always <laughs> team, like, always trying to get an assist um you know what's crazy is that year we played the 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 nfc north um and every game except for Detroit, we had five interceptions against each team. And then against Detroit, we had three. So we had a total of 18 interceptions against those guys, uh, which was crazy. And uh, and we were a middle of pack defense. I think we were ranked like 22 or something like that. And if you're going to overcome that, you you got to be special in one category. And, and we were. And it was good to have, you know, Delta out there. And, and then Odell Thurman, who, you know, played 100 miles per hour, you know, sometimes he was going the wrong way, but he was still going 100 miles per hour. And just the energy <laughs> that he brought to the defense, you know, a guy like me going in, I was in year eight. It was good to get some of that, some of that energy that he injected. Um, and, and then he kind of gave me a little youth also playing beside a guy like that. Yeah, man, he was he was special, man. He was special. Yeah. Jim, Jim, Jim Richie, Richie B. Sims and I, we sat no sidelines for previous years. You know, that, that was my 10th season. We sat on, on, on those sidelines a lot of years, wishing. I know I did for a defense like that. You know what I mean? To, to, you know, we because playing playing the AFC North, you're playing against Pittsburgh and Baltimore, and you're constantly playing against teams like that year to year to year. To, you know, and um, and Levi, and even Levi, and I, we we always said, like, hey man, you know, it feels good to play. You know, for for the first time, you know, 
when Marvin got there in 03 through that 05 season to play with guys like that and to, to bring in a John Thornton and, and guys like that and, and B Simmons and, and, and um, Odell and the rest of the crew. We just, we just never had those kind of playmakers. And for an offensive lineman to be able to have the ball back that many times and to be able to be in the fourth quarter and at least I'll tell you this and not be um, pass blocking, you know, one-on-one -on -one pass blocking at the end of games for the first time in our career, man, what was a fun time just for that alone, you know? Yep. Hey, uh, Brian, Brian, you mentioned, um, in, excuse me, Shane, you mentioned in, injuries. Brian, you've touched on Odell um, Thurman. The number one draft pick that year, uh, David Pollock out of Georgia, didn't didn't make it. You know, I, unfortunately, his NFL career ended early. Can you touch on, uh, you know, what you got to see from David before the injuries and losing him, you know, what impact that had on the team as well? Yeah, it was, I mean, everybody, I think, knew once we drafted David by him being a true, uh, uh, you know, down defensive end in college that it was going to be a little bit of transition for David. Um, they switched him. They kind of started playing him at strong side backer. So we knew it was going to be a transition. But a guy like David, you understood what you was going to get out of him every game, and he was going to play hard, and that's the one thing that he did at Georgia. And when we got him, he did the same thing. And uh, so, so you understood what you were going to get out of him from an effort standpoint. And he did have the ability to rush the passer. But like you said, it was just unfortunate um, with the injury and him breaking his neck and his career uh, being short. Yeah. Hey, I'm going to go ahead and pull on another part of our, our team here. His name's Tom Justin. He's kind of our, our Bengal historian. I know we had a few questions you wanted to throw by. I'm going to pull uh, Tom on here now. Thanks, guys. Um, Rich, yes, being the center on that team, we've had – other Bengal, you know, vets on here, particularly Joe Walters and Anthony Munoz, talk about the importance of communication on the offensive line. Uh, there in 2005, you guys, it seemed like you could do anything you wanted on offense. So much that so much of that had to do with the offensive line. You, know, you yourself, I always thought you're one of the greats in Bengals history. I think you were not appreciated enough by the press, and therefore a little bit than by us, the fans. But uh, I mean, you were making big holes for Rudy up the middle. You were making sure nobody pushed the pocket on, on Carson. What was the communication like on that line? I mean, I, I, we've got veterans telling us that they didn't even call signals. They just knew how the, you guys would look at each other or nod or roll your eyes. You didn't even have to communicate. Did it get to that point in 2005? Oh, it did. The communication level was uh, incredible. You know, we worked with each other for quite a few years. And uh, once we go out there, we we knew what we had to do. And really, we were surrounded with greatness, receivers, backs. I mean, you give us all those tools, and uh, we were able to get it done up front. The communication was great. We always knew what we were doing, and, you know, we were successful at it. Tom, Richie's being modest. Let's stop this. He is being very <laughs> modest. Lisa, Lisa, I'll tell you this. Rich, Richie, allowed, Richie, Richie allowed me to go to sleeping meetings. You know what I mean? If if Rich if Rich was fine, if Rich was fine on, on Wednesday game plan, everybody the whole team was comfortable. Carson first two years, Richie called all the the, um, the the quarterback calls, the center calls. He did everything. Like um, I played with Richie for what? Uh, what Richie? Twelve years? No, eleven years. Eleven years. You know what I mean? And and it made I'm, I'm gonna be honest. With you, it made me lazy mentally because he took care of everything and. You can kind of see what happened when he got hurt in 06. Uh, our offense kind of, you know, went, went haywire for about eight or nine games because we relied on one person for freaking 12, 13 years, man, to to really man that position. And like I say, we all know he's so underrated. He's, he's nah. so underappreciated. And th these things don't happen. The offense don't take off if Richie Brown wasn't playing center for the Bengals. Yeah. That's, that's a God on the truth. I brought this up on another podcast I did where I thought Richie was probably the biggest difference in a team when he left in the Absolutely. way that the offense was. He was probably the most impactful person when, when we missed him because of how, how efficient they were able to be. And when you see that we still had all those weapons and we still had good linemen, but just nothing against the other guys that were there. But, but that, was, that was probably the biggest difference in why our offense – was never quite like that. We had other strong years, but I mean, it was it was just different. And me not even being on the offensive line, 
um, I can appreciate that, especially later on in life when I started learning a lot more about coaching different positions. But uh, I, I just think that so many people understand what what a what a big impact that was. Yeah, Richie was a huge impact. I mean, I mean, he was a general out there. I mean, we got to the line. Uh, we knew exactly what our protections was, what directions we were going. I mean, you could see linemen coming to the offensive line, looking and waiting for the center to make the call. We didn't have too much of that with Richie, you know. Everything was was out quick and in, in, in a hurry, and everybody else can make their secondary calls, et cetera, and get the offense clicking. And I mean, he when he left, you're right, Shane. When he left, that was a big drop off in that department. And I mean, it's not a knock on anyone else, but I mean, it's just a testament to what Richie was able to do and how lazy he had me and Willie. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and, and for me, being being on the other side of football and, and just appreciating Richie, uh, you know, you want to build teams. You hear people say all the time you want to build teams from the inside out. Well, if you're going to do that, that guy you're building around better be tough as hell. And that's what Richie was. A couple games, I seen him grab a leg out of the back seat of the car. And he, was, <laughs> and he didn't miss a play. I mean, that dude was – and I remember my rookie year, you know, having to go against him in practice – um, he made you have to hone in on your skills in terms of being able to read and react because you didn't want to have to deal with him much. So I was trying to beat him to the spot. Yeah, that's that's awesome. See, Richie, I didn't know these guys even liked you, man, until just now. See? <laughs> hey, I got, I've got, I still got a huge collection of Dewalt power tools because of Richie. He hooked me up with it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no, hey, listen, hey, hey, my my four one my four one K is great right now because my rookie year. Um, our back, our um, freak, um, our snapper, uh, God, I forget his name. Uh, rookie year, Richie. Um, uh, Truett, to it. To no, to it. No, great, great. great truth. He grabbed me when all the guys were walking out of the meeting room. And said, hey, get your ass back in here and sign and form. So the next five, six years of my life, I sat beside Richie and copied Richie's 401k stuff. <laughs> 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 Richard was a Richard was a finance major in college, and I thank you not, Richie, for that because my four one k looks great. Uh, you know, you for me copying Richard's four one k plan, my, my my rookie first two years in the league. <laughs> Can I get some advice over the last four months? It's taken a little bit of a bump. <laughs> <laughs> That's a tough one. All right, hey, let, let me let me ask you guys this. So at some point, I wanted to get to this, but. So Coach Lou, man, I don't know what kind of relationship you guys had with him, but I just remember every year he'd come up with these sayings, right? Remember the the do your job? I mean, they, the Bengals marketed that shit, man. They, they had stuff everywhere about do your job. So talk a little bit about Marvin, man. Let's talk about Marvin. Coach Lou was the man. Why are you laughing, JT? <laughs> you know, I, know, I know what you want to say. You go ahead. <laughs> 220. No, I'm, I'm not, not going to say it. Hey, we, we need Justin on here, man. Just, yeah. Justin's flying, he's flying his plane right now, man. Um, I think TJ might join later, I guess. Um, you know, Marvin had the sands, and man, you know, the sands, you know, <laughs> you know, those sands carried the team. You know, you know, the, you know, the, the <laughs> probably one of the most famous ones is, is the shovel and keep digging. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? But um in in the, in the, all, in the night before movies, the the clips. Oh, the movie clips was, was <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. one one man against a hundred. <laughs> uh. Yeah. Oh man. Hey, so you do your job, you should be fine. No, the, no. So the, 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 I was scared. The, the, I was the, the t-shirts. Go ahead. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Now, I was scared. To guys, I was scared to ask you guys this question because there's the man. Hey, hey Coach Lou, can you hear us? <laughs> I got you. <laughs> I know it. I called it. I called well, it. I knew it was coming. Yeah, it was set up. Trash, Lou. Oh, man. Got you. Yeah, well, you know, you know, the favorite one is Man on Fire. You know, I'm a professional. Man on Fire. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a professional. I'm a professional. <laughs> Everyone keeps saying that. I'm a professional. <laughs> I, I'm and and, Mar uh, and Mar Mark, Mark, i tell you, I started coming to him at the end. Hey, man, um, the guys want to change the music at, at the end of the movies. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and Mark was, hey, Will. There's a very diverse group of guys in here. <laughs> well, I had to make music. sure Richie was taken care of. 
Exactly. That is it. I still remember there was a uh, – I, I don't know what the circumstance was. I think it was Dexter Jackson. I think you might have told him to tone it down or something, and he just kept screaming 212 at the top of his lungs in that voice, very piercing voice that he has. No, Coach, you said 212, 212. And I just remember hearing that for like five straight minutes. <laughs> well, as Jim, as you can see, I was blessed with a lot of great people. <laughs> and uh, from Willie and B. Sim, uh, Richie, that were there. But I, but I tried to put Richie on the bench, which he didn't let me ever He forget. tried. Yes, he did. <laughs> <laughs> How long did it last, Coach? One game. We Levi, won that. <laughs> Levi, who was already there. And uh, JT, who came in new. Shane, who came in right before the season. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, uh, obviously I, I was blessed with, with both. Uh, professionals, and uh, you know, hopefully, I was able to provide a little direction uh, that kind of pushed us over the hump. But those guys were very consistent from the time I started about what was important, what they felt like we needed to do to take the next step. So, and uh, you know, so with these guys you got on the screen now, I, I have some fond memories of each and every one of them. You know, and, and as they uh, were pros, young pros at the time, and as they matured and matured through their, their careers and what they meant, you know, and uh, it was amazing. So, you know, Levi from that first year hurting his knee and battling his ass off to come back and play. Uh, so, uh, you know, just a lot of everything, you know, the sacrifices they all made. So I'm very blessed. Yeah. So, Coach, look, man, I, I, this is awesome. This has kind of been like a love fest, but I need some dirt, man. Tell, tell me something you can share about these guys. That that's It's PG-13. PG we got kids watching, Coach Lou, but give us something about somebody on this screen. I know you got stories. Man, we got oh, all the dirt. Oh, we, we, <laughs> we, we the ones with it all. These, these guys don't have the stories. The <laughs> not many stories about these guys. <laughs> we got some stories – Probably got some stories more about their peers. Hey, yeah. I, I, was, I was trying to figure out. I was trying to figure out what game it was we played. It was early on. When Marvin got there, and Marvin was so damn mad. His nose started bleeding at halftime. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think be. I think be. Um, Brian Simmons and I started. I said, "Yo, shit, this dude, this dude here is cold blooded for real, right here." He was, cussing, he was dog cussing us out. His nose bleeding. I said, "Yo, he mad as hell right now." <laughs> Well, we, we 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 had some of the moments from that 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 preseason game that every y'all three y'all five were on there. Other than uh, uh, Shane wasn't there yet with us. The indie trip where none of them dudes wanted to play, and I told the equipment guy, "Rare says put all this stuff in the locker. Let's see who wants to play." And uh, you know, a bunch of guys answered the call. The rest of them we cut and released. <laughs> <laughs> and and that was one of the things I believe that set the tone right from the start. And, uh, you know, I mean, that first game we lose to Denver. And Mike Shanahan says to me after the game, your team doesn't realize how good they are. Wow. And uh, then we lost the next week, close game in Oakland. Raiders. Uh, you know, and then we beat Cleveland the next week. So uh, that kind of started us on run and, and unfortunately, by the end of the year, when we were eight, eight and six, we were so beat up at the end of the year, we ended up losing the last two ball games and missing the playoffs. But, but at least we laid a good foundation there. Yeah, That's what I was saying. I, I felt like that year, like we ended up being a very good team. Like you know, we beat the Chiefs, but we, we started out zero and three. We we beat, we lost to Denver, then we had a close game against Oakland. Came home, lost to the Steelers, and I think we beat the Browns. Yeah. But, um, yeah, we, we were a good team. I, I, I think everybody, you know, I remember going out to San Diego, and that was a tough game, and we won. And so we were having these games where we started to come together, and I think that's when the foundation for this 05 team really was laid. You know, uh, you had a guy like Carson on the bench, and the offensive line was leading us, and uh, Kittner was doing his thing. So I just think we, we learned how to win together. And then the next year, you know, when Carson got put in, he's obviously super talented. Uh, we had other pieces 
on the team. But 05, I think, was a, was, was really a combination of those previous two years of, of everybody. And, and even in 05, I mean, some of our more talented players didn't start. You know, guys like Chris Henry and Chris Perry, you know, super talented guys. Or Odell Thurman being a second-round pick and David Pollock being a first-round. Odell was super talented. So we had a lot of young talent that just didn't – really know how good they were. And yeah, the veterans that were feeding off of them. So um, yeah, that early part, I would say, of the, you know, Marvin's career, you know, with all of us, um, it, it was a lot of talent, but we just didn't, you know, I, I, obviously it was more to do. And, uh, but, but that 05 team was, a, I think, a product of those first two years for Marvin. Yeah. And, 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 John, and John coming from a, a winning organization, like, you know, Richie, um, Levi, and B. Simmons and I had been there for so long. It was just certain things that Marvin was saying that we had never heard before in the coaching staff. It was certain. It was certain way we practices and certain mm -hmm. expectations and things that you know that that you know we took for granted. But when he got there, you know, I think I think John Kitten said it one day. We, we were all just marveling at some of the stuff that Marvin was doing, and Kitten was like, "Well, really, all he's doing is bringing up the speed to, to everybody else." You know what I mean, and uh, which, yeah. <laughs> which he was, yeah, <laughs> which, and which yeah. he was. So, but the thing, the, those small things, man. You know, for a guy like me to start having a chance to win games, and I remember that first year. Like I said, we lost those last two games, but just being able to be in a meaningful, you know, December game was a big ass deal around Cincinnati at the time. And, and, and Marvin brought that energy to where we started being in games. You know, late, um, late um, December. Early January, I still remember being at um, the old field in the last game of the season. Guys had their the winter bagels, you know, packed up, and <laughs> you know, <laughs> I seen, win a bagel. <laughs> I, I, I seen guys win a bagel that you know packed up, ready to go cross country. You know what I mean? So when Marvin got there, Marvin started us winning, man, and, and having an attitude. Hey, these December games gonna mean something, and eventually they turn into you know to winning those games and getting to the playoffs. Yeah. Okay, so, yeah, so right now, Bobby Bobby uh, is trying to, to dial in. He's having some connection issues right now. So Bobby's trying to get in here as well, guys. Go ahead, Brian. I think you were going to really say something. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't know if Coach Lou remember the speech that he gave. And I don't remember the full context of it, but I kind of care with me now. You know, as I coach high school kids, everybody want to raise their hand when things are going well and you're winning. But I remember Marvin saying something to the effect, telling the whole team, listen, the only reason I'm here is because of all of you. So don't think it was just the coaches. All of us in this room, or well, all of you in this room, has something to do with me being here. And that, and that's honestly, that's one of the things that Marvin said that stuck with me as I coach. Um, you know, you can't, you can't be one of those guys who always want to have your hands or hands held up high when you're winning, and then want to put it on somebody else when you start losing. You got, you got to want a piece of it and own a piece of all of it. No, that was that was early on. And, and that was the thing that, that what I said was there were good coaches here before me. Yep. Yep. And and you guys got to understand that if we don't get this done, you're gonna look around and I'm gonna somebody I'm gonna somebody else is gonna be standing in my spot and somebody may be in your spot unless you figure this out. So yep. you, you gotta understand that because and that's the thing and, and and I can't take credit for that because that's basically what Brian Billick said. When he came to us with the Ravens and rehired me, that there was good coaches there before, and, and that's what it's all about, you know. And, and obviously, all you guys on this screen, you know, were very good players there through that time, and just putting all the pieces in place and trying to be more like pros. That's the thing that pushed pushed over the hump, you know. Uh, you know, I mean, between Willie and I know Takeo all the time. Uh, came into my office when I first got the job and particularly to Kale every day <laughs> and tell me we didn't need a quarterback. We had Kitna. No, no, no. That was me. I said that. Yeah. And, but, but, but we had the first pick. So the most talented guy, one of still probably to date, still one of the most talented guys to come out in the draft was Carson Palmer. And 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 so we ended up, you know, we picked Carson, but give Mike Brown credit that he didn't force me into having to play Carson that first year, because what I was worried about that if we lost games, everybody would just say, well, because we're playing with a rookie quarterback, you know, mm -hmm. but to to John's credit, Carson's credit, 
you know, they were able to handle the situation and you guys all rose up around them and, and carried the football team. So, uh, you know, you deserve credit for that. And we all know because we could see Carson's talent every day versus the defense. I mean, we knew what we had, you know, no question about it. So, Coach, we, we – uh, so we, we – we played a few videos. We the, the opening day game against uh, the city up north. You guys beat the the Browns. The week three defense had like thirteen turnovers in two games. Uh, week two and three. Now let's go to this game. I'm gonna play this short video here because I'll never forget this game. It's one of the craziest games I've ever been to in my life. Uh, this is a uh, week eight against the uh, Green Bay Packers. The Green Bay's defense hitting Chris Perry for a four yard touchdown pass on the opening drive and giving the Bengals a 7-0 lead. Ensuing possession since he drove 73 yards on 12 plays, culminating in an 8-yard touchdown reception by T.J. Hushmanzada. Johnson touchdown extended the lead to 21-7. Palmer finished with over a 100 passer rating for the 10th time in his last 11 start line. On the next play, a fan ran onto the field and stole the ball from far. The confusion could have Green Bay's defense. So, so John, Brian, hey, so the fans Whatever weren't I said our life. Yeah. So, Brian, John, the fans weren't feeling very confident in the defense to end that game. So, we just ran on the field, took that damn ball to help y'all out. <laughs> hey, we, we need we needed that bad because that, I think Brett was starting to come back. Uh, Man, right. he he did. Him, bro. It did. It did. Brett was right. He was heating up. He was heating up. You're right. You guys, yeah. you guys remember that game? They're pretty good. Well, it sounds like. Yeah. Well, I mean, again, that, that's the one thing is, you know, fortunately, you know, we played in this very difficult division. We know that. And these guys, they, they did the job. I mean, they, they you know, uh, we the only team we had a losing record with in the division during my time there was the Steelers. They had very obviously dominated the Browns, dominated the Ravens. And uh, but it's to those guys' credit because that's what you got to do. You got to win your division games. And the other thing that we did is we dominated the NFC. You know, from uh, you know we dominated every time we played NFC teams. We really dominated them. And you, uh, somebody mentioned that Charger game out there in San Diego. Well, you know that kind of set a precedent because if you guys remember, we traveled to Oakland on Friday, mm -hmm. and we traveled to San Diego on Friday. And we lost the Oakland game on the last play of the game. Mm -hmm. And then we've beaten the pants off the Chargers at halftime. Yeah. And I remember walking down the ramp talking. Mike Carey was the official. And I said to Mike Carey at halftime, I don't know how Marty Schottenheimer does this shit. This is where <laughs> <laughs> But we beat the Chargers out there. And that really, for management and everything we know, uh, that set a good precedent. Now, I, for the old year. Year, I think a year or so, two years later, where we had to split it. We went to, we went one game, we went to Oakland on Saturday morning or something. And I for, 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 hey, Friday. hey, Marvin, for the old heads, too, like, we, we had never won games like that before. Like, we, we've been to San Diego before and, you know, we had a junior Seahawks experience some years earlier that, that wasn't a good experience. But games like the Green Bay game, and, and I even think back um, – uh, B. Sims and, and, um, and Richard tell you this. Like, for me, I think 04 when we played Washington and we, mm. we beat the Redskins was the first time I said, damn, in the 90s, we would never have won games like this on the road. You know what I mean? And to go to San Diego um, and then go to, you know, have Green Bay come here and beat. I mean, I had played, played Green Bay. I think B. Sims, your rookie year, uh, when, when they had Reggie White. You know what I mean? So we had never been teams. There were certain teams that we were just not used to beating and we started to beat them and, it, and for an old head like myself it just felt damn good bro like jt has experienced that before you know what i mean jt has experienced that we haven't experienced that before so for us to win games like that against big name teams a bit against big name organizations man that, that that felt damn good for me but but it's not a lot and, and you guys know this playing it, it's not a big difference in these teams and i remember being in tennessee and that before we played the Bengals, that was the most afraid our coaching staff was. Like, we would play the Steelers, and it was no problem. The Ravens, you know, we would split with the Ravens all the time. That was just a brawl. Uh, Jacksonville, we would beat most of the time. Um, Cleveland was new, but 
the, the Bengals, but they were always so scared. Like, and, and uh, being a rookie, I'm like, why are we scared of the Bengals? Like, they were just like, oh, story <laughs> offensive line. Like, we could never get sacks on the Bengals. Um, so I knew just before I came there that it was talent. That's why I had no problem coming there. A lot of vets would probably use the Bengals for leverage. But, you know, when Marvin got there, um, that's one of the things that he said. He was like, listen, we're going to come in, change some things, and this is a good team. He's like, you know that. You've been playing against these guys. Um, but it was super, like I said, the Bengals were super talented. And, you know, all, all, all we needed was leadership and, um, you know, just to corral all of the talent that we had. But, um, you know, those close games just built our character up. And, um, you know, we didn't win them all. But, but I would say that year we caught a lot of breaks until the injuries hit, hit us. And, um, you know, I remember in practice, man, it was – I don't think the ball was hitting the ground at all on our offense. And I tell people all the time, I don't want to be long-winded, but that was the best offense that I've seen in years. I don't even know if I've seen a better offense just from being inside of it week to week, you know, watching y'all guys operate. Um, so it was easy for us defense. You know, we got the turnovers. You guys, you guys went out there and did the job. So uh, I don't know if Marvin built the team that way, if he meant to build it that way. But uh, be, being a defensive guy back then, um, but that offense was super loaded. Yeah, there was game clips. I was watching game clips all week. Just cut them a couple for you guys. Dude, I have Carson Palmer sitting back there with all the time in the world. So Levi, Willie, Rich, yeah. and Bobby, and all these guys. Yeah. Man, they were I mean, run blocking machines, and they pass block very well. At least it looked like it mm. on video. So, so let's keep going. So, so, you guys had just talked about some of the games. Willie, you were talking about games you had never won before, right? Before this year, at 04 and 05 team. But let's go to week twelve and week thirteen back to back. You guys go to uh, you guys play uh, the Baltimore Ravens at home um, and destroy them, and then go on the road to Pittsburgh. So let's go to let's go to week twelve uh, versus the Ravens and watch this uh, clip right here. We have a Carson and a McMahon now playing quarterback in the NFL at the same time. And look at this, the Tonight Show during the day. Chad Johnson, 54 yards and it's That is as easy a pitch and catch as you will find quarterback wide receiver. The assault continues against Baltimore. You say Hushman Zada. I say Hushman Zada. And TJ, that's Tom's uh, brother, catches a touchdown. That's Palmer to TJ. So... I, I know that game had to be something to Marvin, but all you guys on the screen, that was a, a big, big win against a division rival right there. Richie, Richie, go. Yeah, I mean, the biggest thing, you know, listening to all this, um, Marvin introduced is how to win. Through hard work comes winning, and we were able to do that. And tell you what, winning makes the game and the hard work so much more fun. You go out there and – Sweat, bleed, whatever. But if you're winning at the end of the day, uh, it, it, it's a blast. And, uh, you know, my last, the last several years and um, my career playing with Marvin was a lot of fun. My first few years playing for the Bengals was tough, but I went out on a high note and uh, enjoyed it greatly. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll, I'll tell you guys, like, uh, I, you know, everybody, we, I had season tickets through the 90s. Guys, I'm telling you, that 05 team changed my outlook on this whole organization. It was the most fun team to watch in 15-plus years. Uh, from a fan base, the reason this this was so popular right now, getting you guys together again, it's when a lot of fans became fans again uh, of the team because you guys were fun to watch. It seemed like you guys were even having fun in, together. Uh, you guys worked your asses off, and, and it was fun watching you guys play, man, from a fan base. It was uh, – 05 team was special. Shane, what 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 year was the year you kicked the the, the winning field goal against, against uh, the Ravens? Is that that, I think, I think that was in in Baltimore. Oh four, right? What's that? Was that oh four when we came back? <clears throat> you know, I, I, yeah, like twenty one in the fourth, or something. Some one it, of them games that was it, that was I, a huge that was that was a huge game for us too, boy. Huge yeah. game. Yeah. Because I think uh, I think it was Cleveland late in the season at home. That might have been 04 also. I've, the the year blur sometimes now, but um, no, I don't think that. I don't know. I think I think the game winner at Baltimore was either, was possibly 04. I think there's a historian on here who can probably look that up though. I always thought it was cool what Marvin did. Um, 
um, and, and, and these stats always held true. Like you put on the board and say, okay, versus division foes, we got to rush for 120 yards a game. And we got he gave the defense goals. And, 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 and I never really paid attention to the defense goals, but I know our goal, every game that we won in our division, we hit those stats that he said we had to hit. And the stats were like 100, 120 yard rushing. Um, you know, ironically, it was like if Rudy got the ball 18 times or more, we, we, we won we won ball games. And so he would tell us, you know, um, um, another one of Marvin, you know, favorite sayings that we all laugh about too, but it, it was freaking true. Well, those division games were uh, two chin strap games. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Why, did you help? Why didn't I get one, Mark? <laughs> no, you didn't get one, Shane. Hey, coach. Hey, bring two head of budget, Shane. <laughs> hey, coach. Let me let me ask you this, coach. Hey, so in, in 2005, Shane Graham set an NFL record with 11 tackles for a kicker. Was he ever? Was Brian Simmons ever in danger of losing his job to Shane Graham on defense? No, but that's wild. I didn't know that. <laughs> we need to talk about that shit. That's, that's, the reason, that's, the reason, that's the reason Shane showed up in you know, in, in, in uh, Ferraris and, and, yeah. and, and, yeah, and better yeah. cars than anybody else. I, I, was, I was waiting. For that. There we go. Uh, no, the, the thing about that is uh, one. Darren always made sure that at certain times of the year, we, we, we worked on leveraging and making sure we were in the right position to make tackles. Um, I've always known that making tackles in space isn't easy for anyone. I mean, I, you see DBs miss them all the time. So my whole thing was when I would do the kickoff return service, where whether we judge the ball or I would kick it off down the field or whatever, I always made sure that I, especially with a tab, uh, What's his last name? Harry. Harry. Yeah. So, so with with Tab, we always I'm, I told him always finish the play and put a move on me. Like practice putting a move on the kicker so that you're not getting looked at on film Monday morning and and getting laughed at because the kicker tackled you. So it would make him better, but it helped me make sure that I knew how to use the sideline for leverage or, or how to fill a space and have a good fit and. No, my form may not have always been perfect, but at least I had enough of a frame that if I got in the way or got my arms around them, I could stop them. And, you know, it was it was just something that I enjoyed doing. But, um, you know, there's also the fact that maybe they weren't all kicked out of the end zone, too. So we can we can maybe blame that. <laughs> but, uh, you know, that's when you had Leon Washington and Josh Cribbs and, and guys bringing them out from nine deep mm. on the 30-yard line. So... Uh, I'll, I'll never say I'm the, I was the best kickoff guy, but uh, I, I was not the best kickoff guy, or probably even in the middle of the pack either. <laughs> hey Marvin, right. I know I know we we didn't we didn't tell you we wanted you on very long. Are you okay for like maybe two more minutes? I want to do one more yeah. video and get your feedback on the yeah. video here. So so week thirteen after beating Baltimore, you guys go on the road to the city near West Virginia, and I'll never forget this game, guys. Um, but let's watch this video real quick, man. I mean, this is a big big road win. And it set the tone, man, for, for this team here. Harrison Palmer with a very quick move, and he's going on top for Hushmanzada. He's got it for a touchdown. Oh, my. Outside the one to tie it. And Palmer will throw for it, and it's a touchdown to Kelly. Reggie Kelly's first touchdown of the season play. Here they come. Into the end zone, touchdown, he goes to Hushmanzada, who just came back in after the injury in the end zone when Palmer inside the one. Rudy Johnson, he's in the end zone for the touchdown. Johnson has the four today. Rudy Johnson, 13 Yards away from the century mark, rare to do against Pittsburgh. Here he goes on the outside at the 10, the 5. He is in the end zone. Another touchdown for Rudy Johnson. Man, I'll never forget that game. I remember it like it was yesterday, guys. So talk about that game. You guys got to remember that one. I do. Um, I still remember it being a big game. because, Like I said, we hadn't had a lot of success against Pittsburgh, you know, on the road. Um, in a long ass time, and um, I remember after the win, um, Marvin was happy, but he does he did what he did all the time after wins. He went through a whole reel 
of of bad plays we had that game. <laughs> And my and my bad play was the last play of the game. I want to say it was Kenny Watson. Um, it was a tough side sweep. I think Levi pancaked this guy's last play of the game. And my job was to run downfield and get the safety. Well, it's the last play of the game. We winning. We we up. I know the game is over with. And I just jogged downfield and barely got a hand on the safety. But Kenny made a cut. <laughs> he made a cut. And if I got the guy, just a, a push the guy, he goes 80 yards for a touchdown. And I remember Marvin playing that shit over and over and over again. Like, come on, Big Will. Look at this. I'm like, yo, man, this dude out of his damn mind. Like, but <laughs> but we all just knew those small things like that, he was gonna let up that we had we had won that game. And then, you know, um, you know, it, that was just a, a huge game for, as I said, a guy like myself who in the past we had, we had, we had, had not had uh, a a talented enough team. But the main thing we didn't have, and, and Richie and Brian will tell you this, we didn't have the tough guys we had. You know what I mean? We didn't have the John Thornton. We didn't have Levi Jones. We didn't have, you know what I mean? We didn't have enough guys. And we finally got enough guys who were willing to go fight with the talent group that we already had. And Marvin put that mindset in our mind that, yes, we did have a shovel mentality. Because you know, Marvin used the saying his father was in the, you know, the steel mines. And we all took that shit to heat. Like, yo, 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 yo we going to... With our hard hats on, with our shovel, and going and fight these dudes, and that was our game plan, man. Go fight these dudes, and um, it worked, you know. Yeah, there was no feeling than going into Pittsburgh and winning that game and silencing those fans and those players and coming out of that game just with that great feeling. I mean, it it was definitely a win that you know that we built on for years to come. I mean. And, I mean, they're right. Those games were fist fights. We came in those games expecting a fist fight. This was all Eric Williams, Reggie White fist fight type of games. And those AFC North games were some of the the hardest, most most brutal impacts that that were out there. I mean, those games were 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 definitely the games that set the teams apart. And like Willie was saying, we weren't winning those games. But now we're going into Baltimore manhandling them and handing them loss. And now we're going into Pittsburgh and doing those same things. I mean, we had like a great measuring stick in our own division of what we would face uh, outside of our division. And quite frankly, those hard games that we played there, those other games didn't compare to those, in my opinion. If we had so a those- mic on Levi, if we had a mic on Levi, and the things he was saying to Joey Porter, his kids, Levi's kids, would be very afraid of him right now. <laughs> Yo, the thing hey, that I didn't talk the trash that Levi I was trying to talk. Listen, the things that he was threatening to do to Joey on the bus after the game, during the game. Like, yo, See, there y'all go again. Hold on. There y'all go again. I have not started one hey, fight. I finished them all. I have not started one fight. That's true. It was violent. Hey, that was you a didn't violent walk away fight right there. Either. I, I, I wasn't did. built to walk away. That wasn't why, uh, that, that wasn't why Mike Brown drafted me. He told me, when, and he put out an article right when he drafted me. He said that, um, I'm sure now that I got a tackle that I can place with my already strong right tackle and put them in any defensive room in uh, the league, and my two tackles are going to walk out. Ah. Between, be, between Levi, like, like for me for years, I, I told you guys before, my whole goal was, and B. Simmons noticed, my whole goal was I'm a lullaby guy to sleep. Even J, even John Thornton noticed. I never really talked trash to guys. I'm a lullaby you to sleep. Like, I'm going I'm to do some of the most dirtiest stuff to you, but ask you, are you okay? I'm going to pick you up, and then you, you good, everything good. Levi and TJ, who stood beside me in the huddle, trash talking my guys in front of me. I'm like, yo, man, y'all shut your eyes up. Like, <laughs> TJ going up to every guy I'm facing. You know, people are killing you. Chad, Chad playing with them. Levi threatening their moms and their, and their kids. You know what I mean? Like, God, but you know, man, it's a group is different. <laughs> it's a different hey, group I got right a good there. dose of that, though, Will. Uh, it was one game we was playing Baltimore in Baltimore, and I, I was hurting from every part of my body was hurt. I did not need to be in that game. And you know how we would do Baltimore. You hit them a good few times. They start changing defenses, dropping in the coverages and everything. 
So I had that game going, perfect situation. And Carson started talking trash to Terrell Suggs. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I was so mad. I'm like, hey, Carson, man, uh, I'm not all the way healthy to be out here. You might want to leave him alone. And leave Terrell. Alone. Wait a minute, you said Carson was talking trash? You said Carson man, was talking trash. Carson told, man, Carson told, Carson told, Carson told, Carson told Terrell Suggs that, yeah, put it this way. I almost had to fight Terrell at home in Arizona <laughs> for what Carson yeah, no. felt. So, so Suggs would never let me live down the fact that we picked Carson instead of him. So that was probably part of it. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely not. Yeah, but, but, yeah. but you remember, though, you know, I, I, I grew up with Suggs, so I knew everything he was trying yeah. to do. So he when it, when the situation happened and every... Carson started cussing, I mean, started uh, yelling at uh, – Terrell and telling him he sucks and he never worries about him based off of who's blocking him. <laughs> Personal, he he got all that back in them next three rushes. <laughs> uh. Hey James, I think we have a view. We're going to go to a couple of viewer questions, guys. Look, I I told you guys nine o'clock about five minutes away. If you want to hang around after nine, you can. But we can sign out at nine. But uh, I, I know we have a couple of viewer questions. There's it, this uh, chat here is going nuts, James. So we do. Again, thank you, everyone, for joining us. Uh, Levi, you just mentioned uh, Mike Brown, the reason why he drafted you. Anybody else want to share a uh, Mike Brown story that we may have not heard before? Go ahead, Coach Luke. <laughs> Marvin, <no. laughs> Go ahead, Coach <bro. laughs> let, 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 let me lead it off. The first thing is Mike gets beat up, unfortunately, in Cincinnati way too much. And obviously this last season, a lot of that uh, kind of got shelved. But, you know, there's, there, you know, the man has nothing else he cares about other than that football team. And, and you know, when I got the job, the, the one thing I said is, you know, you called me and, and let's, you know, we, we're going to be in the NFL, so let's go. And uh, to his credit, you know, he was obviously very supportive. You know, I had to battle for things at times, as the guys know, but but that's part of it, you know. And but but even when we, I brought other coaches from other teams. After the fact, they they like, wow, this is really good, because every one of these players, every one of those coaches, he wanted them to be successful in life, and that's what he cared about, and that's what's so important. So. Uh, you know, a lot of times he gets beat up in Cincinnati about this and that. And, you know, it, it is professional sports. And there comes a time with contracts and things that things don't seem, don't always fall into place the way everybody wants them. And coach included. So, uh, but, you know, uh, I think these guys all have a fondness. Uh, and they were blessed to be able to play there and play for him. I'll, I'll add a story, too. And, and, and I'll agree with what he just said. Um, so my departure from Cincinnati was, was not under the best of situations for myself personally. Uh, I think that was spearheaded by me probably mismanaging a, a franchise tag situation. But when, when that time came and I ended up moving on and going to other places, I remember being back in Cincinnati. Uh, don't remember what it was for. And I saw his wife, who was just the nicest lady in the world. Uh, she saw me at like the ballet in the hotel or something. And she mistakenly, like she recognized me, but yet she misrecognized me. She she said, oh, hey, uh, Andy, good to see you. She <laughs> thought I was Andy Dalton. And, and just a, you know, very quick passing moment type situation. And so she hadn't seen years so it was just very easy to do i guess the hair color we all look alike but um i, I, see it. I was in camp with another team at that time and i got a call from mike brown and he he tracked down my number through someone because i don't know that we had each other's personal numbers he apologized and spent 25 minutes on the phone with me and i just thought that was one of the classiest things to do that something that wasn't that big a deal that he put so much effort into making sure that I wasn't offended by a very easy mistake to let happen. And then I'll go on to add that 
after I retired and got into coaching, one, when I retired, they were very generous with the way that they took care of how I wanted to retire as a bingo and all of that. But then also, um, I got into coaching and they were very generous. And, and I know Marvin was really big in this and Darren, but letting me come back and be around the team and kind of shadow and, uh, you know, ask questions, take notes and just have, you know, very unlimited access to <clears throat> and, and help myself. But he would always come spend time and talk to me. And I just, I always appreciated the way that uh, he treated me like a person and, and not just like a player that, or an employee. Yeah, man. Um, that's right, Shane. My um, the first year I made the Pro Bowl, you know, what I mean, was was a, you know, Marvin noticed this was a very emotional year for me because I've been waiting for a long time to to get in over there, and um, I ended up getting a um a handwritten letter from Mike Brown, and it was it was just basically him thanking me, uh, for all my years of service and, and basically telling me that he thought I should have been a Pro Bowl several years ago, and and um, just a real real small, nice, neat letter. And I thought it was so cool, man. Just, just the thought, the the fact that he, he knew how important that was to me, because I, I had talked about it in negotiations with him. You know what I mean? And um, so for that to happen, and for him to do that, and um, I still remember too, you know, back in the '90s, some real tough losses, even early, some early 2000 losses. You know, um, where we had, because we had fought our asses off, and you know, just hard fought games. And I usually sat in the front, uh, right behind. You know, the coaches would always sit up front, Marvin. All the guys to the front, and um, I remember passing by one, one day with Mike Brown, and I had like ice pack, I had an ice bag on my head, you know, on my shoulder. It's crazy, and um, he came back to the back and, and walked back and, and shook and shook my hand, and told me thank you. So we were just lost. Um, I, mean, I think it was I think it was against Pittsburgh against, against or the Steelers, but he told me thank you, and just tell me how much he how how proud he was for guys like myself and Richie Bram, you know, in those those late ninety years of battling. You know, out against these tough teams. You know, we, we probably were under man, but he appreciated us fighting and playing for him. And I always thought that was cool too, and, and always wished for us to have those winning seasons like '05 for him. You know. Anybody else have anything they'd like to add on the Mike Brown topic? No, I mean, for me, obviously they drafted me, so I'll, I'll always be appreciative of that. Um, you know, because we always we always think we know where we're going to go in the draft, but until you get drafted. You don't know, and uh, and it was just a great, you know, great feeling for me and my family, obviously. Um, so for me, I will always be appreciative for that. And then, you know, once you get there, the way they treat you, and they were always nice to my family, whether my kids or my wife. Um, so, so just a class act. You know, the one thing about Mike Brown, you can say whatever you want to say to him about him, but you can't say they're not gener- genuine, nice people. That's what they are. One other question that's um... – flooded the the chat area and this goes back to the video that we showed the chicago game chris henry's um first nfl touchdown against chicago Uh, obviously we lost chris way too soon such a great young player can anybody uh share a chris henry story with us let let me uh kind of lead that off because you know in in 05 when we were when we drafted chris in fact that 05 draft with David at number one, who we didn't think we'd get an opportunity to draft, and Odell at number two, who is a shame because he's probably one of the best players. I mean, after the first day of rookie camp, I told Mike Brown he's like Ray Lewis. Mm -hmm. And then Chris, who was number three. So as we got to Thanksgiving time, end of November, December 1st, we had three first round draft picks, <laughs> you know, and then obviously Katrina hit that year. So Chris got bombarded with his family and, and so forth. And things went a little sideways for a while, but to that young man's credit and rusty guy uh, who spent a lot of time with him and all of these guys on this phone call who helped mentor, uh, I mean, from Richie, who doesn't know how much influence he had on Odell and Chris, because I can remember the meeting with Mike Brown. Willie, you remember when y'all went up and talked to Mike Brown? And uh, yes. Rich, I think you were there as well. Yep. And I can't remember what it was about, but Odell, as a rookie, was up there, and Chris, who really had a hard time putting a sentence together. 
And unfortunately, that year when Chris passed, I was working. It was Friday. It was uh, Thursday late or Friday. And I felt somebody in my doorway. And I looked up and it was Chris. And he's like, I said, Chris, what's up? He said, Coach, uh, Coach Hayes' son is playing tonight over at Elder. Do you think I could get some tickets for me and my family to go to the game? And I was ready to move heaven and earth to get him and his family into that football game because the old Chris Hanley would have showed up and damn near probably had his jersey on and would have demanded to be let in that game. And so that's how much these guys and Rusty had helped mentor that young man to change his course in life for him to come and, and make that kind of request the right way was amazing. Just amazing to watch him mature, you know, through that whole time period. Yeah. Anybody else on Slim? I was just I was just happy to have a, a weapon, like you know, years years earlier we we had turned down a trade proposition to get Randy Moss. You know what I mean? And yes, we had Ocho and yes, we had TJ. But I think TJ tell you all the time there were things that Chris Henry did that only the top one percent of receivers in the league could do and that was that was one one time late in the year late in november i remember we've been we've been on the on paul brown turf at a practice at practice and um it was real cold for number slim had on sweats and carson threw the damn ball up at least about 70 yards i don't know i don't know if levi and richie remember this and paul alexander our coach kept rewinding that catch slim had like a 70 yard one hand odell beckham catch in practice one day and Paul kept saying, I don't give a damn what people say. That kid right there is a first round pick right there. And he kept running the play back over and over and over and over again. And we realized then what kind of player we had. And we said, hey, man, we have we have an, an elite receiver uh, group. And, and I know people are happy and going crazy, rightfully so, of the Bengals' current group right now. So those guys are unbelievable, too. But that group we had with Ocho, TJ, and Slim was probably right there in, in the history of the Bengals receiving course as one of the top most talented wise talent wise they ever had before in my opinion absolutely man correct i just remember watching carson would throw the ball so far down the field and it seemed like chris henry didn't didn't take <laughs> off running until the ball like left like they'd be at top speed him in the corner running and and that ball has another 20 yards to go chris would just separate at top speed from that defender and go catch that ball. It didn't matter how far he threw it. Chris was running that ball down. And I, I, I felt like that was second to none because he hit enough gear after top speed and stretched out. I mean, he was a long rangey player, but the way he used to run those balls down, I, I hadn't seen that before and hadn't, hadn't been privy to something like that, not in that fashion. And he would throw the ball in the air. He would throw it in the air. Mar Marvin would get so mad at him. <laughs> the next play, he would do the same thing. He would get the stuff down, throw the thing up in the air, and Marvin would pick it up, you know. <laughs> you, know you, you showed the Pittsburgh highlight. You showed the Pittsburgh high, you know, game. Well, Chris caught a ball for the first series. And I said, Chris, you know, they're going to be on you in this stadium. You know, they're going to be on you. And he said, I got it, coach. I got it, coach. So he catches the ball, and literally the fans on him, and he turns around and gives him the finger. And I just look at him. <laughs> <laughs> and I just, oh, my God. But, but that's, you know, uh, he was so talented. And, and literally, Hugh Jackson – all right, I got to credit you for this because when they went over to WVU, they went in and they watched the, the uh, WVU one-on-one take from, from practice, and he ate Adam up. He was killing that. And that's when you came back to Marvin. So I, I know he, he, you know, he's got this and this and this, but he wasn't the worst guy on the team. They had a running back that had worse history than him. Oh, mm, that'd be nice for my school now. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> nice West Come on, Marvin. I'll say this about Chris and Odell. Both of those guys 
you know, for them to be, uh, I was about to say freshmen, but for those guys to be rookies, those guys meant a lot to that 2005 team. Both wow, them, man. With, with just the explosive playmaking ability, the excitement that they brought to the game. And both of them had maturity, maturity issues as, as we all do. But man, both of them dudes were great teammates too. And that's what I think, I don't think a lot of people understand that, you know, those were guys that you like being around and, and, and just the infectious uh, personality that they had. Those those two guys were very important parts of that team. Yep. We're, we're gonna, I, I got I know we got a couple more minutes here. You guys can. I think Levi popped off already. We need to get off. Go ahead and sign off. I, I did. I, we can't. Tom's gonna have a question here in a minute, but we got to get something, man. We got to get some dirt, man. It doesn't have to be bad, but what? Give me some. Give us a. Give the fans. There's tons of people watching. Give the fans some locker room story that you're able to share that you don't get anybody in trouble. But something somebody's never heard before. I know you guys are all smiling, thinking about all the things, right? <laughs> I, I, I got something. I, I, all right, know. all right, B, you go. You know, be, be careful, be careful, be, be careful. Yeah, be careful. I, I am. I am. I am. <laughs> but it was just you know, something that we always laughed about. You know, late, late in November, late December, it, it it's cold as heck in practice, and we out there for three hours because Coach Lou very rarely was he gonna give you a bone. And, uh, and, and and we come in after practice, and they have that soup out there. And we like, man, shit, how about cutting practice short? <laughs> we, well, like, we, we, had, we had soup and hot chocolate now, B. Come on, man. Hot chocolate. Hot chocolate. Chicken, chicken broth. Right, we, we need to cut this practice short. That's what we need. <laughs> Nah. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Nah. Now, Ma er er early Marvin, early Marvin, John Thornton and I had a, had a saying. Early Marvin was, was bone on bone, gristle, bone mm. on gristle. He's going <laughs> to grind out. And he'll tell you, I don't know anywhere else but the grind. But the grind. Grind uh, that's what I would tell him. I don't know no other way. <laughs> no other way. Hey, hold on, hold on, but guys. Hold on, guys. 2010, though, I came back doing some coaching too, Shane. And I go with Marvin Rune to talk to him at the practice. And I see a freaking massage chef set up. Oh, espresso <laughs> machines. Oh my God. He said, yeah, I, I, I get massages for all the coaches. And um, and then two years after that, the players had a recovery day, guys, on Wednesday. And a recovery yep. day. They had smoothies yep. and, and yoga. And I'm like, what the hell is this going on? <laughs> you you so have Marvin, to change. Marvin, got, Marvin changed. He changed. Hey, <laughs> today, you know. It, it's funny because people say you was the head coach for 16 years in one spot, but I had to start over like four times, you know? Yeah, no, no, you did. You did do that. <laughs> and that's what you have to do, you know? We, we had to start over. And, uh, you know, when we lost Richie and Tab Perry and Chris Perry in that 06 game in Pollock against Cleveland, you know, we, we took a step backwards for a while. Well, you remember that, B, you remember sure, that. Sure. Mm -hmm. We did. And we lost those guys in that game against Cleveland, week two, Cleveland, that's yeah. 2006. We took a step backwards for a while. We had to re re regroup. And then, yeah. the, you know, I remember riding that bus trip back from Indianapolis in 08. And I'm like, this shit then hit rock bottom. <laughs> and, and, and that trip from Indianapolis, just like was it the old. What what game really was it where we jumped offside, we got a first down, we had a procedure penalty, and then we had to come back and replay, the game, you know, in Indy too. Uh, it was Indy games set a lot of precedents Man, in my Cincinnati. That damn bus ride, that two hour bus ride back from Indy, I would do a lot of soul searching. So that's when <laughs> I made up my mind in '09 we was going to run the football, and we won every division game in '09, won the division. You know, yeah. you know, so a lot of a lot of, a lot of the memories with these guys, you know, and, and the guy, you know, you, you we got JT, but we got Reggie Kelly and, no, and, no. and yes. Bobby, you know, Big Bobby, yes, along with JT, you know, uh, even Clemens and, and, and Kevin yeah. Hart, hey, oh, no, no. Was part of, and then when we when we traded for Tory Tory, James. You know, made such a difference to this football team, yep. and yep. and uh, you know, along you got with Eric Steinbach, Steinbach got drafted that year. Steinbach and 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 uh, Richie, the other uh, offensive guard, uh, 
you know, who I tried to make the center in front of Richie. <laughs> golf? Richie never going to let me forget that one. No, no. Golf was, was play, golf? Yeah, golf, golf, yeah. golf player, yeah. Yeah. Marvin, yeah, yeah. My right. golf. Remember, so, I, so the, the Jim, so the one thing that I learned as a head coach, I didn't know anything about offensive line play, so I had to learn. And, and, and I underestimated how important your center is and what his job is and how difficult it is. And, uh, you know, I tried to put Richie on the bench. And, and, oh, yeah, I do uh, remember Richie, that now, yes. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> and I was smart enough to figure it out quick enough that, that uh, we needed to have Richie in there. Well, guys, like we'll do a couple more minutes. I want Tom to answer a question, and we'll close with something here real quick. But Tom, I know you had something else you wanted to run by these guys. Yeah, it's not really much a question, more more of an observation and a message for me. And, and talking to you guys, or retired players, uh, either through the show or bumping into them in town, you know, something I think is important. Uh, Cincinnati, in some respects, uh, I think some of the message in sports culture is run through – one particular media outlet. Who that is is not important. But you guys need to know from the fans, you guys are appreciated. So many of you are respected. You do so much for our community. And there is nothing as special in this town in my life, and I'm old now so I can say this, is when the Bengals are winning. And that 2005 team was so special. You had this town so fired up. And when the day comes, and I think the foundation is there, I think it's coming sooner as opposed to later when the Lombardi trophy does come to Cincinnati. It isn't just going to be uh, for the guys in that locker room that day. It's going to be for all the Bengal alumni. And you guys are remembered. You're appreciated. You're respected. And I appreciate you making time time for us tonight. Yeah. Hey, guys, look, I'll tell you, we'll finish with this, man. I know you guys got to drop off. But, look, man, our, our – as a fan base, you know, we, we can we can be on social media all day and bitch about stuff, right? The Hall of Fame, not doing what they should be doing with our, our legends. But I can say what's in our control, guys, is that I can tell you, as long as we're around, your legacies will never be forgotten with this team and this organization. Uh, that 05 team was one of the most special teams uh, to us as a fan base in the history of this organization. I know you guys don't feel that right now from the fan base, but I'm telling you, there are thousands of people watching right now, and that 05 team was very special. And, and I can promise you this, your legacies will never be forgotten by this city, by this fan base, no matter where they're at in this country and across the, uh, the world, because there's the uh, fan base uh, is international for sure, guys. So Jim, like Jim, to... um, hey, Jim yes, real quick, um, I tell you guys all the time, and I know I know John is on Instagram, and he's something on Twitter. You know, John is a big-time sports agent right now. Um, but Brian Simmons just joined Twitter, and Shane's real big on, on social media, along with myself. But I tell these guys all the time, man, um, you guys, since 2020, me me, you guys, you all go so hard for not only the current players, but the former guys so much. And there are so many guys that are not on social media. So these guys don't get a chance to see the love and, and, and in, input you guys have. And the Bengals are not listening to the fans right now on social media. You know, Tom, you know, I tell you guys all the time, man, I love you guys, what you guys do for me, um, what you guys doing for older guys like Corey and Ocho and, and Takeo and, and obviously the two Kennys and guys of that era. But guys, these guys, Marvin, even with you, Marvin, you know, you know on Twitter, we, we, we go we go super hard for you guys. And people are responding, saying stuff like they know Marvin started the foundation of this current bunch to, to start winning because before 05, I can say we was there. Like that was that was no culture of us winning. So having you guys like that, man, these 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 guys here and several more people, thousands of more, hundreds of thousands more fans on Twitter, they go super hard for our our guys, man. They love the Bengals and they, they do remember us. So thank yeah. you guys. I appreciate you and love you guys, man. Man, it's cool, man, because it's it's interesting, man. As a fan base, I know Shane, I know you left the team on a on a kind of a crazy note, and uh, Levi's back in. Let's pop Levi back on. So uh, so you left on a kind of a crazy note. You didn't think the fans would ever love you or talk to you again. Corey Dillon, man, I, I sit in section 158. That last game that he played, he, he took off his his, uh, his uh, shoulder pads and threw them to a buddy of mine. He has his, and, and I know Corey felt the same way. Like, man, these, this city will never love me. I never want to talk to these people again. Yep. But yep. You, you don't know. Uh, I know Shane knows now because he knows he's loved and he's missed and 
and I hope Corey, I hope he sees and hears some of this stuff too, man. But you guys are part of Cincinnati football history, guys. Every one of you guys on this screen, you'll never be forgotten. We will always fight for you guys. And, and uh, man, we appreciate you guys being with us tonight. I mean, it, it really means a lot to a lot of people watching this right now. Well, there's there's a reason why I wanted to retire as a Bengal, and and I and I was so full of pride, you know, wearing fan stuff. I've never been able to truly be a fan, so being able to throw my gear on, watch the game, have people over, get loud and yell at the TV, like I don't remember ever really doing that. So uh, I, I'm I'm glad to be a part of that culture now. Well, let me let me let's go through the. We're going to do a round the horn. We'll go. We'll have every one of you guys make a closing comment. But Coach Lou. Uh, you see uh, Shane's jerseys back there. He played for like 27 teams, so he probably, you know, so so he's got a bunch of jerseys all over the house. But Shane, now we appreciate being with us. B, uh, Brian, uh, kind of give us your closing comment, whatever you want to say, Big O. Yeah, no, that that season was a very good season, and obviously the the the, the best thing about playing football is the friendships that you gain, and 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 being able to do something like this, like me seeing Levi and, and JT hadn't seen those guys in a while and, and Shane and Richie, and then we can just come here and connect as if we just had practice yesterday. And, and that's the best thing about football. The people that never played it before don't understand those kind of friendships that you gain by being in the locker room with guys and going through the things that you go through with them. Yeah. Good stuff. Uh, John. Um, you know, I just want to thank Marvin. Uh, I, obviously we're all on here, but you know, Marvin brought me to Sensi and, um, you know, I remember the first day he called me, you know, first day of free agency. And, um, you know, I had not thought of Cincinnati, but once he did, it was a wrap, you know, and, and we had our little conversations. I was visiting other teams and just his words meant a lot to me. And, and when he came here, uh, I knew we were going to be OK. And, you know, he brought all of us together um, and he did. He has a lot to do with his team now. You know, he. Even though it's different yep. players, I think he uh, he made his imprint in the front office. He made his imprint on an organization that allowed them to take the next step, uh, you know, when he decided to leave. So I definitely want to thank him. And I think I don't think the fans know what he did for us as players and for this, you know, the city and his vision for, for this team. So, like I said, I just want to thank Coach Lewis. Thank all the players that we played with. I mean, I haven't seen a lot of guys in years, but like, it's like, like Brian said, it feels like we just stepped off the practice field. So appreciate you for having me on. Yeah, that's awesome. Coach Lou. Oh, I, I just think, you know, to reiterate what these guys said, I was so blessed to, to have this group of men and, and the other guys we mentioned, we talked about, and uh, just what they did. I mean, they grind. And, and they and they laid it on the line for for each other, and was so blessed. You know, people talk about for 16 years how many, how few different coaches I had. My assistant coaches, so many of them stayed with me. Hell, there's a lot of them still there today, and and I was blessed because of these guys, the environment and so forth, and what they did, and 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 how they sacrificed and so forth. So it's been just tremendous to watch them grow as men and fathers and so forth. And uh, it, it's tremendous. Well, hey, before we get to Willie, we, hey, we got TJ. Hey, TJ. Hey. 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 Always hey. late. Hey. No, no, no. <laughs> see, look, see, I'm, I'm about to turn my camera. I'm always supporting the kids. See, I'm always, y'all see where I'm at? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're always supporting the kids. That's always why we love you. Kids. You always yeah, that's, so random. Hey, that's, that's, a, that's on a random football field. You just showed up at. No, no, no. I went straight. <laughs> yeah, he just pulled up. It's, it's my nephew playing. My nephew playing. There hey, Marv, he's he a six-one corner. Y'all gonna offer and guarantee y'all will next year. <laughs> <laughs> What, hey, hey, PJ, we won't keep you very long, big dog. But hey, tell say quick, tell a quick story about that, something you remember most about that 05 team. Oh man, it, it's PG, PG, PG. No, PG. no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Willie, why are you sitting up in your jersey, bro? We, we hey, all know who you are. We all know how you look. Some folks, some folks, some folks don't. Some folks don't. <laughs> nah, you, I'll, I'll be honest about that team. When when I when I think back on that team. It's really crazy how you just take a lot of shit for granted, man. Meaning, 
we're good, we're young, it's a guarantee we're going to be good next year. And that just didn't happen. But if we go off that year, I'd probably point to the plays. We're, we were good that year because we're good on offense, but our defense was – they were so opportunistic getting turnovers. And that, to me, was – that was the reason we played well. And I tell people, Big Willie and Levi, we seven-step drop, no chip, um, no nothing. It was block your guy. And that, that was a big reason. The defense and our tackles, they, they can hold up with a seven-step drop without any help. Yeah. So so TJ missed all the stuff, man. So you guys can take a shot at TJ right hey, now. Go. Somebody take a shot at TJ. Come on. TJ always no. had who, who? Who, who's, Shane got it. Shane got it. Shane got it. Right? Who spanned the flames, like Levi said, with a friggin' towel, with all the stuff all the time? TJ. This is TJ. TJ. <laughs> nah. What, what, Willie? Nah, I, I, I said earlier on, I said in the huddle, TJ stood beside me in the huddle. And I'm trying to I'm, I'm trying to block my guy and keep him calm and keep oh, him in peace. You, and you shut up, TJ. You don't gotta block him, TJ. You shut gas up, up the man. <laughs> Gassing up the opponent. I couldn't help myself. Him, I couldn't. I could not help myself. And I was like that the first day I got there. I really was. <laughs> the first day I, when we had Dick LeBeau there, I don't know how many guys. My first day of practice ever, I got in a fight. Stay and fine. Dick LeBeau sent me to the locker room. And I'm like, oh, I'm about to get cut. I, I it was, that's just, I've always been that way. Um, Stay mad, Marvin. But for the most part, I, I, I would like to think that I meant well. Um, for the most part, I was a team player, even though I could never get that uh, first parking spot like Shane Graham with his Lamborghinis and Ferraris in the front of the uh, parking lot. You know? <laughs> Yeah. Show up early to work. Show yeah. up early to work and get the first spot. Yeah, get up, get up early. I mean, but we had, honestly though, when Marvin got there, I, he changed a ton. I give Marvin a ton of credit. I mean, he brought guys like JT in that that was used to winning. B. Sims was always the leader, real quiet, but would talk shit if need be. Like he wasn't like we had. We just we had so many good players. We should have done a lot better than what we did. And now that I'm retired and you just you see why certain teams don't win, regardless of the talent. See, somebody just made a nice catch. So the crowd going, hey, I'm at this youth football game, right? I ain't going to say nobody's name. He's supposed to be a first-round pick. Daddy out here trying to fight everybody. I'm like, bro, what are you doing? Your son about to get drafted in the first round, bro. What are you doing? Yo, text me his name. Text me his name. Uh, Bro, like literally, <laughs> hey, they, they stopped the game for like 20 minutes. I'm like, what is this dude doing? No lie, true story, just happened. That's why I was getting on late because it was a commotion. They about to fight. Yeah. <laughs> Never a dull moment. Uh, you can help him out, Keith. Hey, Marvin, I got a guy for you right now. I'm looking right at him. I got one. <laughs> he, he's a sophomore. I'm telling you, that was corner. Well, I, 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 I ain't going to be around for no sophomores out here today to shoot. <laughs> Yeah, you never. Know. Well, hey, you, 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 can help, you can help your friends out. This is my last yeah. ride in college football because I, I can't deal with this NIL shit. <laughs> hey, me too. Hey, Marv, I you can't, can't deal, deal with it. You know what you do, Marv? Just start a company and pay them through that company. <laughs> you I can guess. do it. Yeah, that, that, that is it's the it's the it's the most amazing shit. <laughs> uh, so, so Levi, I'll let you let you gotta get you say your thing about the 05 team. We'll get the Willie, we'll get you guys out of here. So most people know I man, I was drafted and came in in that 02 season, and that was some rough times. I mean, we were two and fourteen. I mean, there was one point, I think up until like the tenth game, we were like twenty-one points from being undefeated. It was just a lot of it, it was rough. It was real rough. And I don't like TJ said, I don't think Marvin or Coach Lou gets the credit that he deserves. He came in and made a lot of necessary changes. He he made a lot of necessary changes. I mean, from the personnel to the culture to how things were ran, how things went. And I mean, it was changes that needed to be made. And like I said, like TJ said, I wish we I mean, he wished we could have had that run a little longer 
you know what I'm saying? But you know, that 05 season, I mean, it was it was just everybody going out there making plays and holding up their end. You know, we we were all good teammates to each other, all tried to take care of one another. And I mean, we played hard for each other. We knew that if somebody was going down, everybody was fighting to try to get back out there because we want to get there and hold up our end for the next man. And I mean, that set that team and that culture apart, in my opinion. Yeah, I love that. Hey, can I say something real quick? Hey, Marv, I want to give you some credit too. You know, once I start coaching, I caught myself using some of the shit you used to say to us to some of my kids. <laughs> hey, hey, I caught my, I'm like, God damn it. Marvin used to piss me off with some of these says, and here I am. So, and I was still, hey, nothing good happens at 12, after 12 o'clock, and no, no means no. No means no. No means no. <laughs> no. Yes means no maybe. Means no. Maybe, yes means maybe. <laughs> yes, <sir>. uh, <laughs> yeah. no, hey, it maybe means no. All get magnified in today's culture, bro. Oh, my goodness. Now. Hey, can you imagine if social media was out I cannot imagine. when we were playing? Oh, in, oh my God. <laughs> we would have had a reality TV the whole year. For real. Jim, 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 one, one, of, the funny, one of the funny, it wasn't funny, really, but a good thing he did was Marvin would bring in on Monday morning. He would bring in and say, yep, your goal is not to be in USA Today on Monday morning. And we show all the guys on USA Today who, who got arrested over the weekend. Got arrested. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Don't be this guy right here. Absolutely. Uh, that old 16 kind of tests the limit, but you know, but <laughs> it's the old six million be different show. Oh six million different show. Different show. <laughs> but nah, man. I um I enjoyed everybody, man. And, and I hope I'm, I'm hoping and praying everybody can make it out, particularly the 05 team, man, to the um the ring of honor deal because like you, know, you guys changed my life, man. You know, that that whole era. Um, but that Marvin started because, like I say, I waited for a long time for us to have a team full of guys who were just ready to go into these Pittsburghs and Baltimores and 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 not get punked out. You know what I mean? We didn't have enough guys, and, and we didn't have enough we didn't have enough coaches, culture, whatever you want to call it. Until Marvin brought that in and brought guys in who we we, we would go in these fights not with just four or five guys, but a full you know twenty two guys and, and probably more than that with our mindsets, man. And, um, that 05 team, you know, I remember the next year, 06, we played Denver. And before the game, Levi was getting shot in, I think, in both knees. I was getting a shot in my foot. Dwayne Clement was getting shot in his in his his um his shoulders. I think JT, you were getting a shot, and the needles was this damn big. The needles, the needles were the needles were huge. And we all were like holding towels, biting down towels, like yelling. We were laughing, like, yo, look at the shit we go through to play this game. But we only were playing that game because of yeah. the culture Marvin had built. Like, guys, I know for a fact, BC, you know this, in the mid-90s, guys were tapped out. You know, I'm sorry. I love a lot of my guys, you know what I mean? But um, um, guys were tapped out in those type of games where guys, multiple guys getting shot up with needles to play in games that you you, you know we need as a team. So um, I love the fact, man, he brought that mindset. And I, I'm, I'm hoping on, um, you know, September 29th, week four, all you guys can make it out, man, and um, come support me because without you guys, I, I don't be where I got to, and, and, and my name is not where it is without, you know, my teammates and coaches and what you guys all done for me. So love y'all, man. I appreciate you, and, uh, you know, that's what it is. That's all, man. Thanks. So that, that game, that Thursday night game, Willie, uh, our, our, our tailgate, we had a couple thousand people across the street from the stadium. Um, if you guys want to stop by and say hi at the tailgate, man, we'll, we'll take care of everybody and their families and – and go from there, but TJ, if you can still hear us, big dog, yeah. hey, you're the last one here. You get to, you get to finish you get to finish the episode tonight. Say whatever you want to say in closing. No, no, for me, it's it's really you go to Willie and B Sounds. They were there before we all got there, and, and so they endure some things that I remember Willie telling me they had jock straps, and him and Kajana Connor <laughs> offered to buy them, just like things that they endured and they had to go through. I, I thought it was normal, you know, and, and Marvin, when, when Coach Luke came in, he changed so much. And 
it was baby steps and, and we we wanted to run and, and it was crawling changing steps and so where the Bengals are now which i believe they're in a great position i don't believe they'll be what we were really good and then they just fall off i don't believe that's going to happen but a part of that is because marvin set a standard there and all they have done is run with it and so you got to give marvin his credit um big willie b sam he brought jt in for the leadership and and sugarfoot shit, he made a lot of uh tough picks for us yep. and, and shane graham always had the fucking nicest cars it was washed every sunday before the game <laughs> parked in the first spot. That was a fact. nobody was beating shane graham to the stadium sunday morning that's a fact nobody Nobody. Four hours before the game. As soon as we finished the pregame meal, I was out. Well, guys, hey, look, we'll, we'll, we'll cut it here. Bobby uh, Bobby Williams has been trying to log on. He's having some issues logging in. He just wanted to tell you guys that he hated not being here for you. And Rich Brand was here earlier, TJ. He just texted telling you what's up, man. So, uh, look, guys, uh, I'm, I'm going to say it for the last time. You guys mean a lot to so many fans across the world. Uh, this, this, this 05 team was a team that really captured the heart and minds of a lot of Bengal fans uh, for this team. But we love you, and everybody out here misses you guys. So I'm, I know right now a lot of people watching are excited to see you guys all together on the screen at the same time. And thank you so much for being with us, guys. We will hopefully guys see you guys Thursday night. Appreciate Thursday you, night. you guys, man. Right. Love you guys, man. Sorry I was late, guys. Love all y'all. See you guys. Who that guys? Yeah, love y'all. We'll big one. I'm gonna be there. Appreciate you. Right there, 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 there. there you go. <laughs> we play USC go. that week. So I gotta go right to LA. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. You gotta stop by um yeah. uh, by Jim's tailgate too. So the tailgate yeah, yeah, crazy. Right. We got you, buddy. We got you. We're right across the street. Post it. Post it. I just, post it in. I just texted you. Yep, nine twenty nine. All right, bro. I love you. All right, see you. I love you too, though. Willie, you mind just ask us asking you one more question? Go ahead. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I'm man, not doing man. that. Man, what did, what did, so you haven't seen some of these guys in a while, right? You talk to them, text them every now and then, but that's the, what's the last time you seen them all on the screen at the same time or at least face-to-face? -face? Uh, I've seen JT and and, and, and B-Sims, obviously. Um, haven't seen Levi. I talk to Levi all the time. Haven't seen Richie. Just found Richie um, about a year ago. I just found him. Um, um, I was helping his son with his recruitment. He has a son who plays receiver and, and linebacker, who's very talented. Um, and, and I would see Shane on Instagram, you know, and, and Twitter. So, but the main thing to me is all these guys haven't seen each other, and some of these guys are not in our big group text. And um, you can see their faces. I, I wish the other guys had gotten on, like you know, fan favorite and, and group favorite is Justin Smith. Like it would have been a total different vibe if Justin was on here. You know what I mean? Um, so unfortunately, he can't. But hopefully, during the season, we can have these guys back on, man. Um, because the stories yeah. are plentiful, and once they get around each other, even even with, with, with Big Bobby Boss, um, oh, yeah. once these guys get around each other, the stories just flow, man. You know what I mean? They they flow, and um, I love these boys, man. And, and I, I'm hoping everybody can see in in, the, in this video that you know the love we all share for each other. Yeah, yeah. that was a lot of fun. Well, Willie, brother, we appreciate you being with us, man. It means a lot. Uh, I'm glad. Glad you're feeling better too. It looks like you're feeling better. I am, man. I am. I'm, I'm still. I'm still coughing up a bunch of crazy stuff, but I feel ten times better, and um, you know, all is well. All right, brother. We'll, we'll see you. Take care, brother. And if we don't talk to you, we will definitely see you on Thursday night football for sure. I'll talk. I'm sure I'll talk to you before then. No doubt, bro. Thank y'all, man. All right. See you. Thank you. Willie. Be safe. See you. Thank you. Big shout out to Willie. There uh, did all the legwork yeah, getting all those. All those guys. That was that was awesome. <laughs> Keep shoveling. Whew. Dude, they were they were all asking who the special guest was gonna be. I, they didn't know. So when they started talking about Marvin, I was like, please don't say anything bad about Marvin. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, that guy. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then just as we're rapping, TJ comes on. So that was unexpected as well, which was cool. This is like two weeks in a row. We've gone over an hour and a half. <laughs> this one, this one was way better though. <laughs> yeah, I, unfortunately, better, like I, I got an email from ESPN halfway through. They saw the amazing transitions of the show, and uh, I've, I've accepted a job with ESPN. So <laughs> I will be back here next week. Sorry, guys. 
Uh, what do you, is that for the uh, water polo or what do you call No, about? just the train. My, my fingers are sore from all those clickings of <laughs> windows back and forth. I'm on my laptop so I can barely see everybody and everyone. Willie starts talking, Brian starts talking, Shane, Marvin clicks in. I'm like clicking away like crazy. I'm like I'm playing online slot machine over here. <laughs> I'm really glad we had the veteran doing that. I would have been completely lost tonight, James. Thank you so much for saving me and saving the show. Uh, I didn't save nothing. It's all Tom, you know, I, I think what um, I think Willie touched on a good point there. Of, you know, certainly his NFL career speaks for himself, but he had a lot of great teammates, coaches along the way. And, and for him to, to welcome everybody to the ring of honor induction is, is pretty special. And hopefully a lot of those guys and teammates and coaches will be able to uh, come to PBS um, for the Thursday night game and, and, and honor him because man, what a, what a great guy. We know what a great player, but you can just see how much love he had for his teammates as well. Yeah. Yeah. Tom, give us your thoughts on that, man. That, that was, that was a lot of fun, man. You know what? We we were nervous uh, last year, and it, and it was fantastic. We we always talk about how great the Super Bowl 16 special was, and it was. And we, we Jimmy, you and I talked about all week about, you know, how are we going to duplicate the chemistry and the feelings that team and those guys had for each other? I think it's the best show uh, we've had. And those guys, those guys made it for we had the right guys on. Uh, they were on the right frame of mind. You could tell, the, you know, the brotherhood they had. So that was that was outstanding. It's great to see him, and it's you know another part of uh, Cincinnati sports history and Cincinnati football history. There are those that can try and cover it up or try to you know kick dirt on on Bengals history as much as they want, but it's special. Those men are special, and uh, they'll they'll live forever. So it was great having them tonight. Caleb, Caleb, you you this was one of the your favorite teams, I think, right? One of your growing up, right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, anyone. Anyone my age, I mean, I'm 32 this year. I mean, so we were, you know, young when this happened. But, I mean, most of the fans at my age, this is the reason that they're the fans that they are. This is – we were buying Chad jerseys. We were buying Hushman Zada jerseys. Like, this was the team that did it for most of us. And, obviously, uh, you can tell we all hung on. So, uh, it's uh, it's been quite – and, I mean, I – I can honestly say that it, it's 100% because of this team. Damn, that's awesome. Uh, t- uh, if you could, Caleb, uh, while you're doing this, can you put the uh, in the chat area the www.bangalgym.com so people can click on that if they want to order some some merch. Um, so next week, guys, uh, as, Tom, as Caleb puts that in the chat area, so next week we're doing a very special uh, Hall of Fame show. The 27th, before the show next week, um, the senior class gets narrowed down to, we think, 12. Is that right, Tom? She, yeah, it's scheduled to be 12. So it's important this week, flood social media. Ken Anderson, Ken Riley, have their backs. Get them out there as, as much as you can. And we're hoping next Sunday to be uh, talking to some some voters and, and perhaps a historian uh, about their chances of going ahead and advancing and getting in the Hall of Fame this year. And hopefully we're not bemoaning the fact of why are they not the final 12 and why aren't they moving on? Yeah. So we uh, we are going to have, we're going to have Jeff Hobson on Uh, at least one of the senior hall of fame voters will be on with us in a, in a, in a history, a historian as well. So uh, next week, yeah, next week's going to be a big episode. We may have a couple hall of fame voters on. I will tell you next week, we're going to do something a little different. Uh, If you are not watching on YouTube next week, we're not going to stream live to Facebook or Twitter. We're only going to be streaming to YouTube next week. So it's very easy. You go to YouTube, go to Bengal Jim and Friends uh, YouTube page, and make make sure you subscribe to the YouTube page. You can set reminders, the whole nine yards. But next week is going to be a YouTube-only show. You need help doing that. You can send messages to us. We'll be able to help you. But it's a pretty simple process, right, Jamie, for somebody to do that? Yes, sir. Yep. yep. Guys, that's it. Uh, James, uh, James, anything you guys want to say in closing? We're going really long again. Yeah, no, I just think a uh, huge thanks to Willie. I mean, it's the, the friendships that, uh, you know, you guys have been able to form through the tailgate, just the opportunities that's opened up. And, you know, Willie said it when in his closing remarks, seeing all the love from Bengals fans on social media, especially on Twitter with him, um, you know, this this is his way of paying that back to the fans by helping, helping a show like ours, you know, by the fans, for the fans, 
bring on some of these guys we otherwise would never have a connection to. So, um, you know, to Willie, if you're watching the replay, thank you so much. And obviously become a friend of the show. And, you know, I think he kind of smirked when you said, we. if I don't talk to you before the Ring of Honor game, he kind of kind of smirked like, he knows. You'll, be, you'll be talking to me. He you'll knows. He knows. So big, big shout out to Willie. Thank you. Yep. Thanks for everybody that's watching, that watched tonight. We appreciate it. We look forward to next week. It's going to be a lot of fun, and we're hoping we get Ken Anderson and Ken Riley in that final 12. Uh, and somebody's asking in the chat area about the online merch. Yeah, you can purchase this online, and all those proceeds, 100% of those proceeds go to Ken Anderson Alliance. And even if you go to any of the Cincy Shirts locations in person, um, that all, all those proceeds go to the Ken Anderson Alliance as well. So, guys, we appreciate it. Sorry we ran long again, but I hope you guys had as much fun as we did. We'll see you guys next Sunday. Who day, everybody? Who day? Who day?